is One on One with Lauren Sidney in New York. It's been said that a family that plays together stays together. But what about a family that works together? On this special Valentine's Day one-on-one, -on -one, we'll investigate the lives of married celebrity couples. Bill Tosh laughs along with the comedy duo Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy share the secrets of their romantic success with Cheryl Washington. But first, I'll talk with a couple that works hard on marriage and on their careers, David and Meredith Baxter Burney. Living happily ever after is not reality for Mr. and Mrs. Burney, whose marriage has survived because of 13 years filled with communication and compromise. The couple first met while co-starring as newlyweds on the sitcom Bridget Loves Burney. It's ironic that the family-oriented Meredith now plays one of TV's model mothers as Elise Keaton on Family Ties. Their own family consists of five children, two from Meredith's first marriage. Oftentimes, David Burney must uproot his California clan when he appears on Broadway. Recently, the Burneys were cast together in the made-for-TV movie Long Journey Home. The film contains some passionate love scenes, and when I sat down with the couple, I found out that being married did not make those scenes any easier. <laughs> Are you You're kidding? Laughing. Look at her. No, of course well, I, it's easier. I don't know. Well, you know, it's... Uh, I, <laughs> that's, that's such a lovely thing to say. I'm just waiting for this answer. <laughs> what is oh, it? no, it, uh, it's, it's, it's tremendously different. Uh, and, uh, but I, I think it, it, is, it is easier because you don't have all that... The inhibitions of you know, editing different kinds of behavior because uh, you're, you're there in a sort of uh, exhibitionist sort of relationship, maybe kissing someone that you've never met before, and uh, you don't I don't feel any of that. It was actually it was, uh, it was very it was <laughs> added an element of it's surprise good, and right? excitement yeah. that uh, they hadn't yeah. been there. <laughs> 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 actually, that's true. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing is that when some of our kids saw the dailies of the. Uh, uh, the phone booth scene where it uh, gets so. Eva and Kate were watching me run through some of the Why? dailies of that and they were like oh <laughs> oh mom mom god you, mm. you and dad are doing what oh gosh uh and I think I think that tells me that it was working even if it's just our <laughs> if it's just our kids looking at it <laughs> that uh it was exciting enough for them to be offended <laughs> <laughs> to offend and embarrass our entire family yeah in a recent article in Parade magazine you are both very honest about what your marriage is really like. It has lasted 13 years? 113. It depends. <laughs> it depends on the day. 113 years. But you did come out and you said, it's not all bliss. It's not all easy as pie. Why did you give those feelings to an article? There's, there's a... One is traditionally asked, no matter how much we talk about the work, you know, uh, we're very visible in certain ways because the babies were twins because we got married uh, two years after we'd done a show together and there is an illusion that is very common amongst all of us but it's something we'd like to believe it goes back to Romeo and Juliet it goes back even further and that is that people meet and they fall in love and they live happily ever after so you always ask that kind of question in an interview context and what you're interested in do, or what uh, funny it seems to me the only responsible thing to do is to say Look, it doesn't work like that, you know. Never, no matter what is presented on the outside, that there's enormous amount of work. There's, of course, there are moments that are difficult and moments of of uh, conflict. But essentially, it's about a a task that survives over the years. And I think the word task in that situation is real important. It doesn't happen by itself. Meredith, I had read that there was a point when you felt that each argument was your last, but that you got over that point. I, I, that's that's no different than anybody else. I mean, uh, one of the things that becomes annoying in a sense about talking about it in public because it, it seems like, well, that's a singular problem with that person, and that's it's not. I guess that's uh, probably why we uh, were so I guess open in that article is just to say dispel those illusions that it's any different than anybody else. Now you work together. You're surrounded by lots of kids. Where is the romance? Where does that fit in? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now and then. No, yeah. one when you can drop everything and uh, I, Dave is probably one of the uh, most romantic people I know. Uh, one, so one gift that has always been very singular in my mind that he gave me was a uh, Limoges. Was it Limoges? 
egg. The, uh, I don't know where you're going, so oh, I just have uh, to wait and find out what this was. A porcelain uh, oh. magenta egg with gold trim on it that I opened up and nestled inside was a uh, and garnet and pearl ring. And it was just one of the most beautiful uh, romantic gestures. Are you each other's most favorite leading lady and leading man? Hmm, that's interesting. I've never been asked that question before. I, uh, I think, I think certainly, certainly among the top three. Now you can ask me who the other two are. <laughs> but you don't want, probably you want that, that, uh, I don't know how people would even respond to seeing this together a lot. You know, um. Yeah, that's, that's hard to say. I, uh, I can't, I can't think of a lot of other people that I enjoyed working with as much. But, uh, well, you like Michael Gross a lot. She tells me a lot of funny stories about Michael Gross. Oh, right? he's, yeah, he's mm -hmm. a, a dear person. But, but that's different because anytime we hug each other, it's like, oh gosh, I wonder, if, I wonder if his wife's looking, wonder if David's looking, and, uh, <laughs> but this is, uh, I just know the kids are looking and they're appalled. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, they're touching <laughs> each other. <laughs> and you're not even in a phone book. What are they doing? Yeah, they're not even getting paid for it, right? The Bernies will be getting paid for their next project, a serious forum comparing a Russian family with a typical American household. Up next, we'll peek into the household of Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy. And now back to One on One on CNN. Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin are partners in life as well as art. Having starred in their own television series, The Marriage in the 50s, as well as numerous plays and films. For 45 years, they have shared everything from Shakespearean lines to telephone lines. They've appeared in the Pulitzer Prize winning play, The Gin Game, for which Tandy won a Tony, and Foxfire, co-authored by her husband. If that's not enough, they've co-starred in six motion pictures, including Cocoon, where they played a couple forced to deal with the realities of aging. You're my whole life. I want to go. But if it's a choice of only six more months here with you, or living forever all by myself, well, I'll take the six more months here with you. I don't want to live forever if you're not going to be with me. Most recently, they appeared in Batteries Not Included as a tough New York couple fighting to save their home from demolition. When Cheryl Washington visited with Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, she asked what the formula is for keeping their 45-year marriage together. Or if we had one, we'd bottle it and become very, very rich. I think we've been lucky in that we really haven't been in competition with each other. And, and I think that although we've had our ups and downs, that we have uh, kept pretty even in our in in growing so that uh, i don't think either one of us has ever felt desperately left behind and we've had more ups and downs we've had more ups and downs. that's just luck and because you uh, finds projects for us to do batteries not included is your sixth film collaboration what are the pluses to working together well, we get to stay together. That's just one thing, which is fun. Um, and I enjoy working with him. How do you feel? Uh, first of all, is you know, you have a support at, at home. You have a support on the pillow. You have a support there. You, you, there's a sort of shorthand between people who've worked together a long time. The biggest single benefit is that we trust one another and if I want to know how to do something or what's wrong with what I'm doing, I ask her. And uh, it works the other way around, too. So you've always got, you, you carry with you an affectionate critic who's prepared to help you over the hard spots. Years and years ago, we did a television show, really quite a wonderful one with Lawrence Olivier. And I had a very emotional scene in it. And I turned to him and I said, Larry, how do I do this? How do I do this? And he looked at me and he said, just give it a bash. <laughs> and uh, not bad advice, but as far as I was going to get from him. But 
with Jesse, I can really expect to support analysis and help, and she can show me. And on the flip side of that, what are the minuses? There's one. Oops. We're, di <laughs> we're, we're, we're different. Jesse will take a scene that she has to play and take it home with her, and I will hear her rehearsing it in the bathtub. And it will come up over dinner, and we will discuss it, so on. But I tell you, when it comes up at breakfast, that's too much for, for me. With, with, with Jess, it never leaves. With me, I like to do the work as well as I can, do all the discussion, but there comes a time when, thank you very much, I just like a drink and smoke my pipe and forget that I'm going to spend 12 hours doing it again the next morning, the next day. Not How do you react to that? I just don't think he's serious enough, that's all. <laughs> Too serious. <laughs> Who's the feistier of the two? Oh, I think we can share that <laughs> in different ways. You mean who's the most stubborn? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's not true. Not for one moment is that true. Who has the shortest views? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins most of the arguments? I don't know, do you? No. I don't care. They much. generally resolve in laughter anyway, so it's um, we played a scene oh gosh, we're going back how many years? Nineteen fifty two or something. A play we did called The Four Poster. And we'd had a very sharp difference of opinion about something or other, and went on to play a scene in which there was a fight, a physical fight, in which she attacked me, and I had to hold her by both arms to keep her in, and then she kicked me in the shin. Now, on the stage, if you kick somebody in the shin, you know, you're very careful to turn your foot so that you hit the shin with your instep, which is relatively soft. She didn't bother to <laughs> turn her foot that day, and she caught me. It was agonizing. I then had to take her and hurl her out of the bed, and, and the fight really became serious. <laughs> the only thing was that at the end of it, we broke up. It was so funny. I mean, it was uh, we it, we were truly furious at the time being. We weren't acting at all. We were just we mad. We never could remember what it but was. I could never remember what the argument was about. <laughs> Do you have a pet name for each other? One that we repeat on the air? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't call her baby. <laughs> oh. Uh, Jesse. That's all. Not you. Not you can't you oh, can't God mess forbid. around with Hume, can you? <laughs> I mean, that's it. Yeah, who was it said to me? It was he said, you've got a marvelous name, just a marvelous name, Hume. Always makes me think, and I'm not feeling very well. I'm going to the bathroom, and I humed and humed and humed. <laughs> that's the kind of poetic thing that's oh, done with my life. The public will have yet another chance to pronounce the actor's name right when Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy appear in the soon-to-be-filmed Cocoon 2. When we return, a mismatch made in heaven. Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. And now back to One on One on CNN. Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira claim they haven't stopped fighting. They've just gotten too old to throw the punches. This feisty comedy couple has been throwing the jokes for almost three decades, making their big jump to stardom on The Ed Sullivan Show. And as they told Bill Tosh, making that first appearance was no joke. Terror. Terror? T-E-R-R-O-R. They used to ask us whether Terror. we wanted to dress in the same dressing room. Which... <laughs> I don't so think we... they asked us those questions. Then we were lucky. We were like on the fourth floor. Remember that building, 53rd and Broadway? That was mm -hmm. the Ed Sullivan Show Theater. Ed Sullivan Theater, Ed Sullivan where they theater. Uh, tape Kate and Allie now. Right. And, uh, wow. We were up there, and, and wherever they put us, it was the same dressing room, honey. We weren't picking and choosing in those days. No, but it was and a it funny was thing. scary. Yeah, they'd always ask teams. Now, he drove me crazy. Jerry just drove me absolutely crazy. I couldn't be near him. I'm a nut before the show. I On really after I... the show and during the show. <laughs> It was just awful. It was really, it was throw-up time. It was throw-up. I care too, but you know, and what it would happen to me on the show, through nerves and fear, and I guess uh, 
you know, that, that need to, to succeed, which is irrational. It's not irrational. I, no, it's not irrational. It was irrational. It was terrible. You had, we had three shots. I would shots. get cotton mouth. Did you ever get cotton mouth, mm -hmm. Bill? Mm -hmm. Did you ever get your top lip sticking to your teeth? Uh, never. And you, you have to pull your lip over. I've never had to do the Ed Sullivan show. I mean. It was scary. Well, it was a tough show because you it didn't have much time to rehearse the new bits. And you, uh, once we were asked to come back, which was the greatest thing that could happen to us because we were totally flat out. We, we lived in Washington Heights. We, we had a five-room apartment that... Uh, oh, don't tell a sad story. I don't want to But the point about. was, we had to move downtown because we got the Ed Sullivan Show because we said, we could gee... could afford if, it. Yeah, yeah, we could say, gee whiz, I mean... You, you, yeah. you, so now we had to make the rent money, and, and the, that meant writing new stuff each time we were out there. Yeah. So you had maybe three or four chances to, to try it out around town. And when you went on, you hadn't had perfected it. get a new it. suit, too. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Nothing, just a little fallout, don't I? <laughs> this is what keeps this marriage alive. So what else are we going to talk well, no, about? I mean, just saying, I just, I mean, you yelled down the hall to him when you were getting made up. Jerry, come down here and let me fix your hair. Well, yeah. I, his hair looks good, doesn't it? It looks... You did a wonderful looks job. All right. yeah. Well, he did it mainly, but, you know. Of course, this is our Valentine's Day show. Yes, happy Valentine's Thank Day. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Don't One touch the... me, Jerry. What? <laughs> I'm at the point of my life where varicosity turns me on. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> you two varicosity. are probably one of the most successful show business couples, at least to our eyes. Yes. Well, and, thank uh, you. We want to let everybody watching know that <clears throat> it is real. We never fight on television. Never did. No. 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 You keep it in the home. In the dressing room after the show, before the show, but not, not on the show. <laughs> right? Absolutely. You too. Now, why are you agreeing with me? Just has come out like a good guy, right? I'm always playing that part of the saint, you see. It's part of the actor. Yeah, he's Andrew's a good guy. Mouth, the, the, the one who comes out and says what it's all about. Yeah. And I play, I play the nice, beautiful character who just agrees. Heartwarming. Oh, uh, real life, I'm really a... Good he guy. is. He's a good guy. Well, when did you first team up? I mean, publicly. Oh, that was in the 60s. Uh, it was, uh, we were in a... a uh, we were in a uh, an improvisational group in St. Louis, a place called the Crystal Palace. That this place was so hip. It was the first time we heard the word hip. First time we heard someone refer to their apartment as their pad. Yeah, it was 1959, and uh, there was Jerry and myself and a very talented young woman named Nancy Ponder and Alan Arkin. And now the Nancy Ponder Zucker. Mm -hmm. Nancy Ponder Zucker and Alan Arkin, who's still Alan Arkin. And uh, we uh, were directed by a guy named David Shepard, who still works in improvisational theater. And out of that, when that group disbanded that summer, then we started to work on uh, characters we developed in that group. And we, he had always wanted to do a comedy act. Went out as Stiller Mirror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 1960, 61, uh, 62. We started in the coffee houses in the village. Just to back up a little bit. Yeah. When you were performing in the village in the early 60s, were you two married then? Yes. 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 We, 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 already, we were already married. Mm -hmm. for years, yeah. We decided to have an act. Yeah. Uh, we were being cast as trolls and uh, tall character women uh, who were too young to play leading ladies. That was yeah. the right word. We so weren't we, ever cast as a couple because uh, we mm. were we didn't look like we went together yeah. or you know we could never check into a hotel uh, unless we had a suitcase and a birth certificate and a marriage license the guy would always say hey, you guys can't be married come off it what are you talking <laughs> about but I, I i used to at one night I, in <laughs> chicago when we were working i mean the fact of the matter was we were after we were doing a review in chicago at the happy medium one night we went into a bar and myself That's and, the Anne's, early 60s, yeah. and Anne's father and uh, one of the great places on uh, on Rush Street, and uh, I was talking to Ann's father, and suddenly uh, I said hello to Ann. I, I, can you pass me the pretzels or something? And a guy took a swing at me. I said, "What are you doing?" He says, "Don't try to make out with my girl." And uh, <laughs> this guy was just talking to me. He thought it got I was really ugly. He thought I, I mean, was with a joint. Chicago had a lot of joints. <laughs> he was. He thought I was making a pass at Ann, and he was trying to make a pass right. at her. So I, oh, it was his way of coming on to her too to be the right. big hero. Oh, yeah. So I, I, they never would dream that we were married and that was i the when that started happening we said hey we maybe we could do something in the relation these, these offbeat type characters that we were always mistaken for you know the mismatches in life 
uh, the, the, that seems somehow <laughs> to be the way life evolves, you know. So that was where the comedy came in. The comedy continues with the couple and with their solo careers as well. When Jerry Stiller's newest effort, the film Hairspray, opens this week. Join us next week when we'll open with Robin Williams. We've come into special time. The CNN people are here. We are going to say hi to you, Ted. The wind is blowing. The satellite dishes are being torn out of the ground. You know what that's about. That's why they coded the channel. They're coloring movies again, even The Wizard of Oz. I've got to go. I know where you live, Robin Williams. My name is Ted Turner. I'll buy your house. And Chuck Norris. When I got into acting, of course, it was the philosophy and the drive that you learned from the martial arts that gave me the initial push to succeed in, uh, in film, my film career. But the big handicap I had is that in the martial arts, you learn to control emotions. You need to keep it inside. So when I got into films, you know, of course, <laughs> you got to let it out to let people know what you're thinking. And it was a little difficult to start expressing myself, you know, or, you know, overtly. That's a wrap for now. I'm Lauren Sydney in New York. Have a heart-filled Valentine's Sunday and a great week ahead.